Well, we don't know a lot about Charlie Montoyo, the brand new manager of the Blue Jays. So Steve Phillips, TSN's Blue Jays and MLB insider, is with us on Overdrive to kick things off and explain this. Uh, Steve, thanks for uh, taking some time on short notice. What do you know about this guy, Charlie Montoyo, that we hardly know anything about? All right, so so you know, whenever you hire a manager, and good to be on with you guys, whenever you hire a manager, you know, the general manager needs to be able to tell his story as to why he's the candidate. And here's here's the story for Charlie Montoyo. Uh, he was a minor league infielder back in the day. Got a cup of coffee in the big leagues with Montreal in 93. Had five at-bats. He's a, he's a 400 career hitter, by the way. Good hitter. Uh, so, uh, you know, so he had, he had five at-bats, cup of coffee in the big leagues. Uh, after his career was over, and by the way, in 96, he was Vlad Sr.'s teammate in Harrisburg uh, of the AA Eastern League. Uh, so he was his teammate for part of the season. And from there, he went to the Tampa Bay Rays organization where he immediately went in as a rookie league manager. He has 18 years of managerial experience, over 2,400 games. So a big player development background. He's all about young players and development. And certainly that's a big part of the Tampa Bay Rays organization. Low market, small market, low payroll. He won a Southern League championship as a manager. When he became the International League uh, Durham Bulls manager, he managed there for eight years. He won seven division titles, made it to the Governor's Cup six times, and won it twice. Uh, he's in the International League Hall of Fame. His numbers retired in Durham. He's the winningest manager in Durham Bulls history. Uh, he got called up to be the third base coach for Tampa Bay and then the bench coach. And what's interesting about that is, you know, over the last couple of years, we've seen Tampa Bay sort of take analytics in another direction where he's been the guy sitting next to Kevin Cass, the manager, going through the platoons that they use, the openers, all of the analytics and the shifts and everything they use uh, and, and been a part of that. Uh, and he is all about player development. He's bilingual, bicultural, Puerto Rican uh, descent. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think he's got a, a substantial resume to be a major league manager. He's, he's interviewed in Seattle. I think he interviewed Detroit as well. His name's come up in a, no, a number of different places. Uh, but he, you know, player development is going to be important for a rebuilding team where young guys are going to have to learn at the major league level. That's right in his wheelhouse. And so he's a humble guy. 18 years as a minor league manager, never been a self-promoter, just a guy who goes about his business, does his job, very well respected, uh, and a great teacher. And so, you know, there's a pretty nice story for the Blue Jays to tell about Charlie Montoyo. We can talk about a nice story and pump his tires and talk about his accolades, Steve, but it, to me, looking at this, it seems like there was a couple swings and misses with other people, and then this guy is ultimately the, the manager of the Jays. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know if that's the case. I mean, you know, they were in on, uh, uh, you know, a couple of different guys, and, and but does that mean uh, that they talked to people and they missed, and then this is what they came up with? No, I don't think this was I, ever I their first option, was it? I, I think that that it came down to Joe Espada, who's the bench coach for the Astros. Rocco Baldelli was in the mix for them as well, uh, and Charlie Montoya was in the mix. Now, you know, the, David Bell was probably a guy they considered as well. Uh, but I, I don't look at it that they were, you know, they weren't in on the veteran managers. They weren't in on Joe Girardi's and guys like that. Uh, they wanted somebody who could grow. Now, go back to when they had the press conference with John Gibbons. Uh, and Ross Atkins made it, you know, one of the things he, he, you know, I always listen to what he says because within there there's a message. Uh, and he said, you know, it would be nice if they were bilingual, bicultural. So I think that they really wanted to be able to get somebody that could speak Spanish to interact with some of the young players uh, in the organization, uh, with Vlad Guerrero being a big part of it. They've got a guy who played with Vlad's dad, so there's an established <laughs> relationship there. Uh, and he is a very well-respected uh, baseball guy. He's just a, a, you know, he's not a big name. And so, uh, uh, you know, where Alex Cora had more of a name, uh, Aaron Boone had more of a name, this is a guy that is a veteran minor league manager so the managing the game part will be easier for him than maybe some of the other guys. Uh, and it's going to come down to developing young players. And, no, and you look at Tampa Bay Rays, they're all about young guys. It's all they do. They bring young guy after young guy up to the big leagues. And he was extremely successful as a AAA manager and as a bench coach in that organization. They had a tremendous season. And not a surprise that Rocco Baldelli and Montoyo, uh, you know, I think people looked at Tampa Bay this year and said, man, they're on to something. We want a piece of that because that's what you do, 
right? When you're, when you're interviewing managers, looking for managers, you look at successful teams, and you want a piece of what they do. That's why the bench coach job for the Astros, Joe Espada, that's a, that's a huge job right now, right? Because we saw Cora was in that role. He got the job, and now everybody's talking to Espada because they want some of what the Astros have. With Steve Phillips, TSN Blue Jays and MLB Insider on Overdrive. Steve, you're being very generous giving five at-bats to a cup of coffee in hockey. Five at-bats isn't getting you a cup of coffee. That might be a sip of coffee in the major leagues, but that's <laughs> yeah. not a cup of coffee. Yeah. All right, okay. You're right. It's a sip of coffee. You played like 11 <laughs> years, nine years in the minor <laughs> leagues. It's like a little like, bit of a sip. Yeah. Can you give us a reference in the last you know, handful of years and say, oh, this hiring reminds me of that person? Like Joe yeah. Madden was a career minor league manager. Yeah, I think he's more of the Brian Snitker and Mike Schilt uh, background. So Snitker in Atlanta, you know, he's been in the organization forever, uh, paid his dues, worked through the organization, uh, and was not a self-promoter. And I think Mike Schilt in St. Louis, kind of the same way, and both guys very well respected. Snitker may end up being uh, a, certainly a strong candidate for the National League Manager of the Year this year. Uh, and uh, and Schilt, there were people suggesting that when they started to make the run after he came in, that he should be in the mix for Manager of the Year. But that that's probably uh, the pedigree. That's probably the background of the 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 long term worker B guy that that paid his dues uh, and has and had great success while doing it. Very well respected, but under the radar. Uh, and a humble guy that certainly knows where he's come from and, and uh, grateful for the opportunity. Steve, our buddy Scott Mitchell, TSN's Blue Jays reporter, is saying that this contract's three years plus a club option for a fourth. And to my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, that would take him past the expiry of the first contracts for both Shapiro and Atkins. Do you find that interesting, or is that just kind of common three plus an option? I, I think that, that uh, it's... It's probably pretty common. I mean, I, you know, if, if, if you're going to hire a manager, right, remember the Washington Nationals. They wanted Bud Black, and then they only wanted to do a two-year deal. And he's like, yeah, no, I, I, that doesn't work. That's not a commitment to me. Dusty Baker took the job uh, and, and got a two-year deal. And so, uh, you know, typically a three-year deal is pretty common. The option year is certainly something that the team always would like to have uh, if possible, so not a surprise there either. Uh, and so, and, and look, it's not going to break the bank. Uh, you know, we, we know that like Boone and I think Boone's making, you know, uh, just over a million, like a million one a year uh, in New York. So we've seen these young managers, you know, the, the price tag for managers has gone down rather significantly. And certainly for Montoya, this will be great for him, great for his family uh, and uh, uh, certainly a great opportunity and more money than he'd ever make being a bench coach uh, in Tampa. What does this mean for a guy like Gibby? I mean, does he go back to Texas and chill out for a couple of years and then possibly call a team and say, I'll be a third base coach or hit like, what, what, what does it mean for a guy like that? Where do, what do these guys do? Do they just sit back and say, well, other people are taking over younger guys. There's a new wave of thinking, or do they just say, well, maybe I'll be a first base coach, third base coach, hitting coach, pitching coach. What do they do? Yeah. I think that, that, you know, guys are all different. He's got a year salary coming to him, Gibby. So, you know, he'll be able to sort of pick and choose what he wants to do. Uh, baseball is better with John Gibbons in it. I would suspect that, that there will be teams that would either consider him as a, a bench coach, first base coach, uh, if he wants to do it. I mean, that's going to be – the other thing is, you know, could Gibby be sort of a special assistant for a front office in, in Toronto? I think that, you know, there were some discussions when, when he was leaving and he was out uh, that, you know, maybe there is an opportunity for a role later that, that you know, because a guy like Gibby's made enough money, what, 11 years managing or whatever it was over the two stints, he's made enough money to, to live on and take care of himself and his family and, and his kids uh, for forever. Uh, and so I think he can, you know, he's going to want to stay involved, I think, and be around the game, but maybe have less time and, and restrictions on, on what he's doing. So I think he, if he wants to get back in uniform, I think the opportunity will present itself, whether that's as a manager or not. I think his next interview, the first question they ask is, do you have the energy for it? Because he said that he didn't know if he had the energy for the rebuild, and that would be something that obviously he's going to have the hurdle he's going to have to get over if he ever does want to manage again. Uh, but, uh, you know, Gibby's such a good guy and so well-respected. If he wants a job, there would be one for him in the game. Right, and that's a psychological thing with Gibbons, Steve, because Charlie Montoya is 53. I mean, yeah. Gibbons is 56, 57, so it's not like, you know, Gibby's a grandpa and, and Montoya is one of these kids. Like, Baldelli gets the deal with the Minnesota Twins. He's 37 years old. This is more of an opinion uh, thing than anything factual at this point because it's so early on, Steve. But the Tampa Bay Rays were one of these teams that used – the opener 
yes. at times this year. Like Blake Snell's going to win the Cy Young, 20 wins, 200 innings. He was awesome. But like two or three times a week, they'd throw the opener, get three, four, five outs from the first pitcher, do the same thing with three or four subsequent pitchers over the course of a game. Do, do you think that Montoyo, having been the bench coach for Kevin Cash, may bring that here where it's like a sanchez Stroman kind of hybrid situation? Like where do you think this all, all goes? Yeah, I think it remains to be seen. But I do think that the possibility exists that within – a team's starting staff, there will be openers, and it will likely and probably be some part of what's implemented in Toronto. I do. I, I, I'll, I'll be surprised if it's not. I think that, that you're going to see this happen, uh, I think, much more substantially now than ever before. I think people look at Tampa Bay, and they think it was a success, a, 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 a tremendous success with what they did. And, and I think there's an opportunity there to either blend some young kids in and break them into the big leagues in that capacity, right, where there's not that sort of burden going through the lineup the first time. You can put a reliever in the front end and then get the young kid in through the, the, you know, the, the middle and back end of the lineup and sort of get them into it. So I think from a development point of view, it's an interesting way to start to break some young guys into the major leagues. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some element of this that is at least part of the transition period in the rebuilding process in Toronto. Whether it maintains itself beyond that, I think, is to be determined. Uh, but you're looking at a Tampa Bay Rays team that won a heck of a lot of baseball games this year, and if they were in the American League Central, it might have gone to the playoffs. 